The Traveling Totem Pole, Cherokee Culture, History, and Language Preservation in Public Education. The Cherokee are a Native American people that historically settled in the southeastern United States, principally Georgia, North Carolina, and East Tennessee. The Cherokee language is an Iroquoian language. In the 19th century, white settlers in the United States of America called the Cherokee one of the five civilized tribes because they had assimilated numerous cultural and technological practices of the European American settlers. The Cherokee were one of the first, if not the first, major non-European ethnic group to become U.S. citizens. According to the 2010 U.S. Census, the Cherokee Nation has more than 314,000 members. The Cherokee language is classified as vulnerable, according to Google's Endangered Language Project, due to that there are only an estimated 16,000 speakers, the largest of 566 federally recognized Native American tribes in the United States of America. One of the three federally recognized Cherokee tribes, the Cherokee Nation and United Kitoa Band of Cherokee Indians, have headquarters in Oklahoma. The United Kitoa Band of Cherokee Indians, or UKB, are mostly descendants of old settlers, Cherokees who migrated to Arkansas and Oklahoma in about 1817. The Cherokee Nation is related to the people who were forcibly relocated there in the 1830s under the Indian Removal Act. The Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians is located on the Kuala Boundary in western North Carolina. The Cherokee have seven clans and have had that number as long as there has been contact with Europeans. Some have multiple names, but the seven are the result of consolidation of as many as what were previously 14 separate clans in more ancient times. The Anigo Dogawi clan, or the Wild Potato, or occasionally the Blind Savanna clan, were known to be keepers of the land and gatherers. The Wild Potato was a main staple of traditional Cherokee life in the southeast. The Anigalogi, or Long Hair clan, whose subdivisions were Twister, Wind, and Strangers, possibly separate clans in origin that were combined into one, were regarded as peacemakers. Peace chiefs would often be from this clan. In times of peace chief and war chief government, the peace chiefs would come from this clan, and prisoners of wars, orphans of other tribes, and others with no Cherokee tribe were often adopted into this clan, thus a common interpretation of the name Strangers. The Anikawi, or Deer Clan, were historically known as fast runners and hunters. Even though they hunted game for substance, they respected and cared for the animals while they were living among them. They were also known as messengers on earthly levels, delivering messages from village to village or person to person. The Anishahone, or Blue Holly Clan, which subdivisions were panther or wildcat and bear, probably in origin two separate clans that were later consolidated with a third clan. Historically, this clan produced many people who were able to make special medicines for their children. The medicine was made from a blue paint, which is where the clan gained its name. The Ani Jisakwa, or bird clan, were historically known as messengers. They believe that birds are messengers between earth and heaven, or the people and creator gave the members of this clan the responsibility of caring for the birds. The subdivisions of this clan were raven, turtle dove, and eagle, probably in origin three separate clans later consolidated into one. Earned eagle feathers were originally presented by members of this clan as they were the only ones able to collect them. Aniweya, or wolf clan, has been th known throughout time to be the largest clan. During the time of peace chief and war chief government settings, the war chief would come from this clan. Wolves are known as protectors. Historically, the wolf clan was the largest and most important among the Cherokee. The last of the seven clans is the Aniwodi, or paint or red paint clan. The Aniwodi were historically known as pr prominent medicine people, and medicine was often painted on a patient after harvesting mixing, and performing other aspects of ceremonies. So in researching Cherokee cultural 
history, language, and heritage preservation, the major foundations, groups, and organizations that are associated with preserving Cherokee cultural heritage are the following. There is the Cherokee Historical Association, which is a nonprofit organization that was founded in 1948 and whose mission is to perpetuate and preserve the history and culture of the Cherokee people. Next, there is the Cherokee National Historical Society, and they have a mission of preserving and promoting Cherokee history and culture. Next is the Cherokee Preservation Foundation, whose mission is to preserve the Cherokee native culture, protect and enhance the natural environment, and create appropriate and diverse economic opportunities in order to improve the quality of life for the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians and their neighbors in Western North Carolina. Next is the Tribal Historic Preservation Office, which is charged with the responsibility of protecting Cherokee archaeological and cultural resources, ensuring historic preservation of significant Cherokee sites, protecting Cherokee burials from disturbance and excavation, and conserving and promoting rich heritage by encouraging enhanced understanding of the importance of the Cherokee people to the broad patterns of United States history. The National Trust for Historic Preservation is a privately funded nonprofit organization who works to save Americans' historic places. Chartered by Congress in 1949, today's National Trust has become the organization its founders envisioned, the vigorous leaders and expansive movement that is changing the face of America. The Advisory Council on Historic Preservation promotes the preservation, enhancement, and sustainable use of our nation's diverse historic resources and advises the President and the Congress on National Historic Preservation Policy. So the target audience for this cultural heritage preservation communication campaign is public elementary school students that are either United States or American citizens or foreign nationals who are 5 to 13 years of age female or male, and are from a lower to upper middle socioeconomic family class. And since the National Council for Social Studies creates national standards for social studies teachers that focus on culture and cultural diversity thematic standards, already in place on a national level on the cultural and cultural diversity thematic standards, which assist learners to understand and apply the concept of culture as integrated whole that governs and functions interactions of language, literature, arts, traditions, beliefs, values, and behavior patterns. They enable learners to analyze and explain how groups, societies, and cultures address human needs and concerns, guide learners as they predict how experiences may be interpreted by people from diverse cultural perspectives and frames of reference, they encourage learners to compare and analyze societal patterns for transmitting and preserving culture while adapting to environmental and social change. They enable learners to assess the importance of cultural unity and diversity within and across groups. They have learners interpret patterns of behavior as reflecting values and attitudes which contribute to or pose obstacles to cross-cultural understanding. They guide learners in constructing reasoned judgments about specific cultural responses to persistent human issues, and they have learners explain and apply ideas, theories, and modes of inquiry drawn from anthropology and sociology in the examination of persistent issues and social problems. So to achieve this communication goal required research in Cherokee culture, historic and language preservation foundations, Focusing on pulling it together in a central delivery method such as a kiosk or multimedia station and designing this delivery method to be indicative of the Cherokee culture. So in researching the seven Cherokee clans that were particularly identified with an animal totem or collar, I have decided that a seven tribe Cherokee totem pole would be the most appropriate vehicle of information dissemination. So by utilizing a Cherokee totem pole as a media preservation totem pole, which references the seven major Cherokee clans, wild potato, long hair, deer, blue bird, wolf, and paint clans, 
My target audience of public school students in elementary school will be physically engaged with a sculptural object and be educated with media information as to the various Cherokee cultural, historic, and language preservation initiatives. And so the traveling totem pole, a media device that contains multi-sensory presentations that speak to the specific clan and discuss a particular preservation entity, such as the Cherokee Historical Association, was born. So the traveling totem pole can be easily disassembled, transported to another public elementary school, and reassembled, functioning as a traveling art piece, an artifact of Cherokee cultural significance, an educational device, and a way to promote Cherokee cultural, historic, and language preservation. And so each of the seven Cherokee tribes have a specific piece or totem piece in the traveling totem pole. So when developing the wild potato clan portion of the traveling totem pole, I utilize the textural aesthetics of the potato combined with images of field, sky, and land because the potato clan were keepers of the land. When designing the bird clan portion of the traveling totem pole, I utilize the aesthetics of the Cherokee de depictions of birds, eagles, and ravens to model and surface map the totem pole piece. When designing the Blue Holly Clan portion of the totem pole, I utilized the primary function historically attributed to the clan, which was the making of medicines from blue paint and visually referencing the plant-like forms and images from medicine. When developing the Deer Clan portion of the totem pole, I chose imagery of the forest combined with the hide and antlers of the deer to represent how the deer clan respected and cared for the animals while they were living amongst them. Since the Long Hair Clan was regarded as a lot of peace chiefs and that they would actually be from this clan, I created a totem pole that reflected the face of a leader but also emphasized the long hair associated with the clan name. For the Paint Clan, which were historically known as prominent medicine people, which was painted on a patient, I designed the portion of the totem pole to reference the aesthetic of many different types of paint across this portion. And finally, for the Wolf Clan, which were known as the Protectors, and when, when designing this part, I did, decided to create an aesthetic that embodied a lone, statuesque, wolf-like sentinel. And so, the traveling totem pole is able to be set up in a multitude of different ways with the integration of video multimedia capabilities, audio, input, touchscreen based panels, and can be ran as, as a self-running artifact, as a technology aid for teachers for classrooms, or as just a visual artistic sculptural device.